story of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar. That's one of the first biblical love triangles, if you will. But Genesis 16, 7 through 13 talks about how the messenger of Yahuwah comes to Hagar. At this point, she had ran away because she was being treated harshly by Sarah because she was given to Abraham because Sarah couldn't conceive and Sarah felt some kind of way and was jealous more or less and Hagar couldn't deal with the treatment she was receiving so she ran away and as she was in the wilderness the messenger of the Most High came to her and asked her why she left and she told the messenger that she was fleeing from her mistress And the messenger then told her, you have to go back because you're going to conceive a child by Abraham. And her offspring was going to be too numerous to count. And in hearing that news, she said that because the Most High sees her, and of course I'm paraphrasing, but because the Most High sees her affliction, she calls him El Roy and that spoke to me this morning as I was reading that passage I looked up El Roy because I wasn't well I looked up the term the El who sees And I was given El Roy and it just spoke to me, spoke to my Ruach. It was beautiful because he does see us. Yes, he sees us in the physical sense. He's all knowing. He's everywhere. He's, he's omnipresent, omnipotent. He sees everything that we do. Yes, in that sense. But also, we need to be encouraged. This is a word of encouragement this morning. I'm recording this on January 12th. And this, again, is a word of encouragement because we need to know and understand that He sees us, our afflictions. He understands what we're going through. He is not oblivious to what we are dealing with in our personal lives, collectively as a body of true believers that's trying to walk in this truth, in this awakening. He understands. He knows and just like he never left Yahushua, he will never leave us. Yahushua specifically said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So we need to take that to heart. We need to be encouraged this morning. Today, 
this evening, whatever it may be in your circumstance, know that he sees you. He sees your affliction. He sees your struggle. He sees your pain. He knows. Trust him. Lean on him. That's what he wants us to do. When we go through these trials, a lot of times we have to understand it's not the enemy. The father is putting us through things to make us turn to him in those times. And this word for me was a reminder of that. He sees. I'm encouraged. As I record this, I'm encouraged and I pray sincerely and wholeheartedly that you are encouraged as well. Please go back, read that passage, read that entire passage in Genesis or Bereshith 16. And just draw on that strength, meditate on that word and understand just like Hagar, he will flip that situation around and the blessings will come at what seems like it may not manifest into blessings. It will. Your situation will turn around. So that he can get the glory. And oftentimes it'll turn around where other people can see it. So they can understand. Many times it's divine intervention that turns situations. Well, every time it's divine divine intervention. But specifically to others. So they see that yes. This is truly divine intervention. Because there's no other way it could have happened. The word also says. About it talks about. How. Let your works. The word says. Let your works so shine before men and of course again I'm paraphrasing so that let your light excuse me so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the father which is in heaven we have to stay on this on this narrow path we have to keep going regardless of what's taking place in our lives what's about to take place he's still there and he is El Roy the Elohim who sees Shalom be blessed <music>